before I go any further, I am going to turn my back to you for a while and give you a set of very simple instructions. And I really crave your indulgence because I know some of you are much older than I am. To just follow the instructions as simply as possible. Okay? Could I have everybody in this auditorium or everybody who can hear my voice, I want you to point at yourself. I don't want you to point at someone else. I want you to point at yourself. And if you're doing that, I want you to do one more thing. Whilst you're pointing at yourself, I want you to take a look around the auditorium as far as you can see. And I am boisterous enough to say that you will discover that about 90 to 95% of people in the auditorium are pointing towards their chest region. True or false? <laughs> True or false? Can I take your response to mean yes, that almost 90 to 95% of people are pointing towards their chest region? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, like I said, my name is Martin Abraham and I am Nigeria. And I'm going to take a few moments to explain to you why you didn't point towards your head. You know, I asked you to point at yourself, and you did not point at your head. You see, subconsciously, the head is the place of information. It's the place of data. It's the place of formula. It's the place of formality. It's the place of structure. It's the place of process and procedure. It is also the place of rights and maybe even the place of justice. But you didn't point at any of those places. So when you identify yourself by yourself, you are not a formula. You are not formality. You are not informed. You are not information. You are not a collision of data or processed information. Rather, you pointed at your chest region. You see, in the chest lies the places of your vital organs, yeah? And chief of them, or amongst them all, is your heart. When I told you to point at yourself, you pointed at your heart. The heart is the place of inspiration. And the word inspiration is derived from the word in the word spire, and the word shone. At this platform, I will um, leave the word in and the word shone and deal specifically with the word spire. As I was speaking with some people before, uh, I mean, I had this privilege to come up here today, I told them that the word spire is gotten from uh, a Latin and a Greek word, and its meaning, in natural essence, is spirit. The word spire means spirit. It means flow, it means movement, it means breath. So for every time you pointed at your chest region, for when I asked you to do it and you pointed in that area, what you were saying to yourself and not to me in entirety is that you are inspired. You're an idea, you're a concept of virtue and value. You are not a set of data, you're not a machine. And I put it to you today that, considering where we are now as Nigerians, for us to move forward and take uh, ample cognizance of where we are and where we're going, you must be what? Inspired. You must fall in love with the Federal Republic of Nigeria like you love your mother and your father. You must get to the point where you understand that this nation that we call the Niger area it's not a function of some rules or regulation. It's not going to be consisted or constituted by justice or rights or the constitution. But you must see this country as my daddy, my father, my brother, my sister. This country must cease to be a coalition of rightness. But it must start to live from the heart region. It must start to live and breathe. It must be the blood that flows through your skin or underneath the skin. I personally believe that some of the greater challenges we have in this country is as a result of people not being able to identify in the natural essence with the core of what it means to be a Nigerian. 
We have no nationalist, nationalist mentality. And we don't live from the place of inspiration. We're not inspired as Nigerians. And a lot of us think that inspiration is going to be handed over to us. Whereas, when you pointed at your chest region, you were announcing to me that I, myself and I, I am what? Inspired. I'm going to borrow a few words from uh, a, a sage, a guy who, I mean, in, in his own paramises and ramifications, was a holy man. And he gives us a couple of words that help us understand what it truly means to be inspired. Look at what Patanjali says about inspiration. Patanjali says, when you are inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bounds. Your mind transcends limitations. Your consciousness expands in every direction. And you find yourself in a new, great and wonderful world. He says, dormant forces, faculties and talents become alive. And you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. As a Nigerian, is this who you are? Do you love this country? I'm asking you a question. Because it is easy for us to point fingers at other people. And as, as I've heard, a lot of the uh, luminary people who have come here today and how they have spoken about the truth, I remember when we watched the video and the man pointed our intelligence to capture the fact that the number or the fraction or the ratio of people who occupy leadership position in the Federal Republic of Nigeria is so myopic to the extent and the gratitude of number of those of us who are here. If really democracy is going to be democratic, it's really going to have to be government of what? The people by the people and what? For the people. There's a beautiful movie I saw a couple of years ago. It's called V for Vendetta. In the movie, there was a saying, it says, government, I mean, the people should not be afraid of their government. Well, government should be afraid of their people. I don't totally agree with that ideology. Fear in of itself is immobilizing. Fear in of itself is what? Immobilizing. The people should love their government and the government should do what? Love their people. Because whether we agree or we don't, love is still the most fundamental and the most powerful thing, ideology, doctrine, being that there ever is. And I think that the natural challenge that we have in this country as we consider where we are right now is this. Are we in love with the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Do you love this country like you love your mother? Because I'm, I'm absolutely in love with my mom. Absolutely. But do I love this country like I love my mother? Or am I weighed down and burned down by all the ethnic diversities, the language barriers? Am I still looking at the color pigmentation of people and saying this gentleman is Igbo, this one is Ibibio, this one is Efik, this man is Hausa, that man is Yoruba, this person is Fulani? Am I still painting this federal republic? Am I still painting the Niger area with different colors and different pigmentations? Am I still looking at Nigeria in its disjointed form? If there is ever going to be a color, if there is ever going to be a pigmentation that Nigeria should be, ideally, it should be like this, bland. When I see the country, I'm not looking at color, I'm not looking at race, I'm not looking at religion, I'm not looking at rights, I'm not looking at ethnicity, I'm not looking at state, I'm not looking at local government, I'm looking at it as what? The Niger area. And if perchance, some of you want to take on the characteristic of uh, uh, Pablo Picasso or Michelangelo, and you see the necessity of having to apply color to give meaning to things, then the only color that Nigeria should have or should wear is this. It means when something cuts you and you bleed, you should bleed what? Green, white, and green. Do you love the Federal Republic of Nigeria? The, you know, I, I try my best to, um, to study. I try. find it difficult. Professor, maybe you can help me out. So I try. And I realized that there's this beautiful quotation I found out in Plato's Republic. You know, they were talking about the state. And in, in, in Plato's Republic, it says, the injustice is unavoidable, and justice is what? Unattainable. And I tell people that, you see, excellence is not a location. Excellence is a journey. And it's called excelling. Justice is not a location. We're not going to arrive at justice. We're going to keep working towards it. And I want you guys to also understand something. Justice is the place of the head. 
I tell people that every time you have two parties at war, justice on one side and peace on the other side, pick peace. Because for every time humanity sought justice, people died. It was the seeking of justice that led the German people to justifiably kill the Jews. It was justifiable to some white people in Nikos Appetite in South Africa. And the slave trade, the white man at that time could justify it. And many more genocide and killing, eroding the rights of other people based on what people considered justice. Even when the Americans, you know, swarmed that United States, before they created the United States and the natural Indians who occupied the land, and they killed them in en masse, they called it what? Justice. They were able to back it up with the Constitution. Now, the Nigeria that you seek, 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 that I seek, won't not be on the premise of what? Justice. It will be on the premise of what? Peace. Every time your right and peace is at loggerheads, I suggest to you, pick peace. Pick peace. And that's why in our coat of arms, they already called our attention to it very succinctly. They already said it. It says unity, faith, peace, and progress. Tell me which one of this is logical. Tell me. Which one of these concepts is logical? It makes sense. It doesn't make sense. They don't make sense. Peace does not make sense. Love is not rational. It's not logical. I, it's not two plus two. The coat of arms tells us that if we truly want there to be progress, we have to do it in unity, by faith, we get peace. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to a very critical point of my beautiful opportunity to stand on this you know, I'm looking at this X, and it looks like it's a dot for a target. <laughs> but I, I got to be careful, you know. This looks like it's a target. But I've come to a point in my uh, opportunity to speak and to address you that I'm going to recite the national anthem. I, for one, I think that the fact that we've been reciting our national anthem like it's a song has robbed us of the power that it possesses. As far as I am concerned, the national anthem is a razzler to duty and to responsibility. And the word responsibility is the word response and ability. It means reply, power. Epictetus said something so profound. He said that God has entrusted me with myself. The responsibility of the Federal Republic does not lie in anybody else, but in people who consider themselves Nigerians. So I charge you today that when I mention the first line or second line of our national anthem, if you truly consider yourself to be patriotic, then rise up. If you know that you're not patriotic, sit down. It will be fine. I will not have any qualms with you. I will not jump over this stage and try to take you on. It will be fine, because then I would know who is really with me. I will know who is standing with me. I will know who I can work with. I will know who knows that they don't need me to pay them or give them a contract for us to further this idea called the Niger area. So I will give you the opportunity and the privilege to sit down. But for those of us who know that we're truly patriotic, when I give you and sound that clarion call, I ask you to fully rise upon your feet. Arise, O oh compatriots. Nigeria calls, obey. You know, I'm not the one who called you. I'm not the one who called you. Nigeria called you and you obeyed. And the call is very simple. It is to do what? to serve our father's land. Now, the beauty of our national anthem is that it also prescribes to us how this service must be rendered. It says that we must serve our fatherland with what? With love, with strength, and with faith. It goes on to tell us that the labor of our hero's past shall never be in vain. The blood they have shed, those who have died off Ebola, 
those who have lost their lives out of injustice, those who have had their rights marginalized, those who could not eat, those who have used a batch of stove, those who have had to queue up, those who have had to use stoves, those who have had to use some sort of other chemical that blew up and they died, those who could not get to immediate health services, those people are our heroes who have shed blood. And your fathers and my father and your mothers and my mothers and even those of us who are still here, we're still sweating every second of the day and that sweat is going to the very soil of this very nation. You are the heroes. We are the heroes. And our labor will not go in vain. You know, I didn't ask you to say amen. So if you're going to say one, then say it well. Amen. amen. But it also tells us that this labor must what? Is to serve with heart and might, one nation. It didn't say three geographical, it didn't say that. It didn't say 36 states. It didn't say that. It didn't say Abuja. It didn't say Eboni. It didn't say Yenagua. It didn't say Lagos. It didn't say Medjugorje. It says what? One nation. It says what? One nation. Bounding what? Freedom, peace, and unity. Ladies and gentlemen, remember at the beginning of the time I got here, I told you to point at yourselves, and most of you pointed towards your chest region. I want you to do it again. This time, I want you to clasp your chest. This time, I want you to clasp at the place that gives loyalty. This time, I want you to clasp at the place that gives love. This time, I want you to clasp at the place where concepts and ideologies like peace and unity emanate from because they're not logical. And I want you to join me as we pray the prayer of the second stanza of the national anthem. Whether you're Hausa, Igbo, or Yoruba, Catholic, Protestant, um, whatever, Methodist, Baptist, is not the situation. Whether you're Muslim, Hindi, or Buddhist is not the situation. We have one nation prayer. And that nation prayer is in the second stanza of our national anthem. Join me as we pray for this nation. One, two, three, go. O oh God of creation, direct our noble cause. Guide our leaders right. Help our youth the truth to know. In love and honesty to grow and living just and truth. Great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. Now, before you sit down, just before you sit down, just before you sit down, just before you sit down, I need to tell you a very short story. There was a man, just before you say, please oblige me just for a few more seconds, and I'll be out of your hair. For those of you who have hair. <laughs> be because, yeah, I used to have it, it started doing backslide. I don't know where it's going. Some principal kept it there before. I don't know what happened. Anyway, there was this man, and um, he prayed to God earnestly for God to make him successful. And God told him in a dream that he had to um, go into some sort of um, wilderness or forest, you know, to get the answer. You know, we're all looking for the truth. The truth is in the forest. The truth is in the forest. So he woke up the next day and went into the forest. And then... He was led to a particular part in the forest. Now he saw a fox or a dog, if you prefer, with no limbs, no arms and no legs. And the fox was hinged in between two stones. And he stood there for a while watching the fox. And after a while, a lion came and dropped food at the mouth of the fox, thereby feeding the fox. And the fox ate heartily. And then the man told himself, he says, God is telling me to rest like the fox and that lions will feed me. So he went home and sat down and put his feet up. And then after one month, no food came. No ravens, no lions, nobody. You didn't come, I didn't go. Nobody brought food to him. So he went back into the forest and prayed to God. How come there's no food? And then he got his epiphany. And this is the moral of the story. And this is what I want to leave you with. And God told him, be the lion. You are the one who should provide for other people. As Nigerians, do not care or ask what Nigeria can do for you. Be more concerned on what you can do 
for Nigeria. God bless you.